Hey everybody, David Burns. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're gonna to take a look at the Horizontal Hive. I'm gonna tell you where I got it, who made it for me, and I'm gonna actually recommend that you consider checking their website out because a Horizontal Hive may be just the thing that you need. Today I'm gonna to explain some things about Horizontal Hives. We'll talk about it. I'm gonna to try to see if my Winter Bee Kinds will fit on here, the Burns Feeders, and tell you how I plan on managing it. Now, before I open up this horizontal hive, I had it custom painted for a reason. I want you guys to please subscribe, click on the bell so you'll be notified each time I new, make a new video, and give me a like, thumbs up. Now let's open her up. Ooh, look at that. That's pretty cool. This window was pretty awesome. Watching the bees work down in there, you can kind of see them working the new frames already. Get a little smoke in there. Now, as we get started, I want to tell you guys, this is not a paid promotional video. I actually paid for this hive with my own money. Uh, they were kind enough to want to offer it to me for free because they uh, follow my YouTube channel. But I believe that everyone is worthy of getting paid for their hard work. And so I wanted to be able to pay for it myself. So I would rather pay for it myself and that way I can give an honest review of it. Um, not that some reviews aren't honest, but you know, if somebody gives you something, it's hard not to uh, kind of really talk nice about it. <laughs> so let's talk about this uh, horizontal hive configuration. First, I want to talk about the quality of the workmanship. It is superb. It's very strong, very good construction. It's beautiful, beautifully hand painted. Um, it even has gaskets here, like a rubber gasket to seal better. Um, the hardware is very professional. The top and the hammered top look on this uh, appearance of copper top is, is really nice. Again, the legs are strong. I like the little porch, I'll show you that in a minute. Here you would put a, a frame hanger, attach it here, and the little hangers come out like this. I'll put one on there. But really, really uh, impressed with the quality of the work. It's heavy duty. Now one of the things I'm considering adding to it, and actually a, uh, one of you guys commented on my YouTube channel when I first unboxed this, is adding a strut. I think a strut from here down to here would be nice on both ends. Because if I'm out here working right now and a big strong wind comes, look at that parachute that's opened. And it very well could either uh, ruin my hinges or pull the whole thing over. I think just having a strut across here uh, from top to bottom would help a lot. I'm not sure how I can make that work, but I'm gonna research it. If you guys already know how to attach a strut to this, leave a comment below so I don't have to do all my research. It needs to close all the way, uh, but it needs to open and be held by the strut. Also, if the wind's out of the north really hard and I got my hand down here, it could blow it shut and crush me. So adding, that str adding struts on both sides, I think that's gonna work. All right, so who is the company that makes this? And let me show you. I think it's on the back side of this. There it is. <laughs> Ta-da! A lot of you have asked me, who made this for you? Horizontal Bees. And if you go on, I'll leave links in the description below. They're out of Creston, North Carolina. Ricky and Ruth Rourke actually made this for me. Like I said, they were kind enough to want to offer it free. And uh, nope, I said, I'm going to pay you. And he, he, quite honestly, fought me pretty hard not wanting to take money from me. They're a very honest family, hardworking family. And, um, well, I really like doing business with them. They are, I would say, the only thing that I would kind of say that you need to be aware of. Um, they're very busy building these. <laughs> so, you know, if you build one, don't expect to get to get it in, in a day or two because, you know, these there's a lot of... A lot of time goes into building these, so give them plenty of time to get this done, especially if you have it hand painted. They do hand paint a lot of these. 
Now let me close this just for a second without the inner covers. I want to show you something else on the, on the other side. Now one, things I, one of the things I noticed, you guys can watch the video where I showed you how I uh, actually consumed up a uh, Langstroth hive that was sitting here. And these bees adapted and started flying right into the porch. One of the things, I think it said this in the instructions, but I'm not sure. I've got to remove this hinge, I think, because it's not allowing my porch to sit flush here. And I noticed on some other videos that uh, there's not a hinge here. So I think I've got to remove that to make that sit flush uh, for a porch. You know, it's got some nice vents up here. It's got entrances with the uh, kind of several things that you can adjust these openings to. Either let the bees fly in and out of both ends or queen its glitter vent only. Um, that's pretty cool. So one of the things I noticed though is once I put these bees in this horizontal hive, they started working three times as hard. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not kidding you guys. I'm serious. I mean, this, this hive is, is an average size hive. It's, it's just like the one over here. It's early in the morning. It's like eight, eight thirty in the morning. You know, look at that. That now this is a strong colony. Look at the activity. See some pollen coming in, some foraging. But gosh, if you look at this, they just picked up the pace once I put them in here. <laughs> they really have. Might be just because the entrance is a little bit smaller, but um, they seem really active and they, I, I just don't know what to say other than I think they love it. Now I asked uh, Ricky who painted this particular uh, hive custom painting of the bees and all. Look at that. That's hand painted. And I haven't heard back from him. I thought his wife did it. I think, yeah, I think that's her here. I can't read what that says. Does it say Melinda? I can't read, but it, I, I know her name's Ruth. So thank you, Ruth, for a great job of painting this. And I really thought the paint job, look at that was just really cool. I wanted this to be on here just like that. That couldn't be any more realistic. <laughs> it's really great. And look at that top cover, how it's just kind of hammered like that. And it did get damaged a little bit in shipping, but I'll take my hammer and straighten that out. It's not a big deal. All right, let's, let's open her back up and talk about things in here. You don't want to forget your inner covers. <laughs> I imagine they build comb all up in here. All right, so here's my Burns feeder. Let's say I wanted to put it on here and feed the bees. Yeah, that that just fits perfect. And make sure it closes well. Oh yeah, perfect. So this feeder is going to work great. But I will have to consider the jar. Um, I'll have to use maybe a smaller jar because I'm only going to get this much uh, space so it might be one of those a pine or something but you know that's that's just what it is now i don't think there's any way that my winter bee kinds are going to work in here unfortunately uh, because of the top i think they'll fit in here okay yep they'll fit perfectly but my top i can tell already you see since this fits higher the top isn't going to close let me try that Yep, it's not going to work. So what I'll have to do is I'm going to design a winter bee kind so that it's built where it's recessed. So that um, I can have my team that builds these actually make it so there's a space over here that when this top closes, it's going to sit flush. And the height, this height you see here, will be lower for the lid but it will rise up here that'd be an easy adjustment and uh, so we can make these available um, as soon as we get that uh, figured out but that, that's going to work out fine for me i have to overwinter with a winter be kind you know that i can't live without my winter be kind this is a test model that has sensors built into it and i run studies on it so what i want to talk to you about with the horizontal hive is the main feature that i feel that it's best for is that it's best for your back. 
I mean, you're not having to lift heavy boxes on and off the hive. Now, this isn't going to work if you're a commercial beekeeper and you have, uh, you know, Langstroth hives that you're moving across the country pollinating. Obviously, it's not for you. But for backyard beekeepers that, you know, maybe have 10 or less hives, I really think this is the way to go. Um, I have ran horizontal hives before in the way of top bar hives, but I've never successfully overwintered a top bar hive because I've never been able to figure out how to feed them in the winter. But I'll be able to modify my winter bee kinds to fit perfectly on here, and that's gonna be really good. The other thing that these horizontal hives are really good for is that you can put in your queen excluders, you can, you can raise queens in here, you can have little five frame nucleus. He sent me a, a lot of different sizes of inner covers so that you, and, and follower boards so that you can actually have a stop point you can kind of uh, have it just be a five frame nuke if you want it and block off the rest. You, you can, a lot of adjustments and I like that. Um, but I think the main thing that I like the most about it is it's height. I really do. Most of us that keep bees nowadays um, are anywhere from 20, 30, 40 and on up. And any of us that have worked bees a long time that uh, we already know that our backs are suffering, let's face it. Lifting those heavy 50 pound, 60 pound supers and deeps around with honey in them, it's a back breaker. Not just that it's difficult to lift the weight, but you know, you're holding on to little handles and all. Now don't get me wrong, behind the camera, there are 20 plus Langstroth hives that I still have to muscle. <laughs> but I'm having fun just thinking about it. getting more horizontal hives. But this is gonna be my test horizontal hive. I wanna see, can I use my techniques that I've employed on my Langstroth hives, getting them through the winter on a horizontal hive. I have, I don't wanna sound like I'm bragging, but I have mastered the art of overwintering Langstroth hives by feeding them in the fall with my Burns feeding system and building up bees of winter physiology with this. This is available online again, if uh, you guys are, are wanting to get this. And yeah, it fits the horizontal hive. Now, I wanna tell you about the Burns feeding system here. Um, this is something that you have to put on your hive in the fall. Late summer, when you hit a dearth, allow two weeks of time to pass. Let your bees know there's a dearth. That they panic, they start raising bees of winter or dearth physiology. But without nectar sources, the nurse bees can't raise a lot and they can't, sometimes they lose it. What uh, the queen lays, they consume it out of protein deprivation. But by following my methods, I've made a lot of YouTube videos for you guys. If you can create a two week dearth, let them know that the flow is over, that usually in Illinois is about August then wait a couple of weeks and then start feeding them heavily through the Burns feeding system. They'll start raising bees of winter physiology. These feeding systems, you guys want them so badly, they go out of stock so fast. So if you need them for the fall, you better spend this summer getting them so you'll have them on hand. Please don't wait until the fall to get those because they'll be out of stock. So many people are buying them at one time, but they fit on here good. So it'd be a test horizontal high for me to see if I can figure out how to overwinter it. Now, a lot of people that have made YouTube videos on the horizontal hive, they live in the South. You know, they're in Tennessee, like Cayman Reynolds uh, shows his, and a little bit warmer. But when you're up here in Illinois on the prairie, 20 mile an hour winds, 20 below zero, and this thing is up in the air off the ground, allowing more wind under it and over it and around it. Uh, be honest with you, I'm a little worried. So it's going to be experimental. If I lose it the first year, I'll just take that data and figure out why I lost it and start making adjustments like I did years ago when I figured out how to properly overwinter a Langstroth hive. And not only overwinter, but come out of the a winter with a very strong hive. Now, those of you that have watched all my videos, you have seen me talk about these horizontal hives and how I'm a little worried about them in overwintering because bees overwinter in a tree, their native habitat, they put all their honey above them in a hollow tree and they put the brood down below. And as winter progresses, they move up into the honey above them. The bees can't really move up here. They have to move sideways. 
I'm a little worried that bees have a harder time moving sideways because quite honestly, the frames are in the way. They have to go, in this case, with the inner covers on the top, they're gonna to have to go all the way down below the frames or side the side part of the frame uh, to actually move. They can't move as a cluster. And that's why I feel that horizontal hives may be a challenge in the winter time, but we'll see. I'm sure that there's plenty of people in the North that overwinter these horizontal hives. Now, another thing that I wanna talk about with horizontal hives is where do you put the honey supers, where, or the honey frames, where do you put the brood? A lot of discussion about that. My personal opinion is that we need to follow what bees do naturally. And that is the brood is near their opening, the honey is above them. Can't do that here, it's not gonna happen. Now, some people like to actually um, make the bees in a horizontal hive fly in one of the ends. And that's typically where you might see your brood, and then they would put their honey further back away from the opening. That makes a lot of sense to me. Now, when I uh, corresponded with Ricky, and I said, I like the porch, the bees are enjoying going into the middle. But I said, I feel like they need to go in one end and uh, put the brood kind of down there and the honey back on the other end. And he kind of disagreed. He said in his work and his studies, he's found that that middle spot where the porch is, is the best all around placement for the bees to come and go. And yeah, they'll put brood in, the, in that middle section and honey after that. So, you know, who knows? I understand what some of you are gonna leave comments below and tell me that it's better to make the bees fly in one end, but I'm gonna leave it in the porch setting for now uh, at Ricky's recommendation and just kind of see how the hive develops uh, using that approach. So be sure and check out Horizontal Bees, uh, Ricky and Ruth Rourke. I want you to check their website out. And I know some of you are beekeepers and you're, you're really married to Langstroth hives like I am. Um, I do have a few others like uh, the Apime hive over here. I've got a flow hive over here that I, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to change that up. I need more bees in there to, to get that flow hive uh, super filled up. And I've got a nail hive. So I'm trying different hives and basically for you guys and paying for them myself. So I want you guys to consider supporting uh, the Rourke family. They're, they are, I think, a hardworking family. All this stuff here is American, American made and everything. And um, I, I believe in supporting family businesses. You guys are great to support my family business of my online beekeeping courses, my B Team 6 mentorship program, which is still open for a little while. So be sure and sign up for that. So supporting your uh, American beekeepers, especially those of us working hard, making videos for you guys, means the world to us. I love you guys so much. Now, if you'd like to see the video of me unboxing this and setting it up, take a look at that video. It's right over here. I'll see you guys over there.